And so we had a marching band and a bunch of people, and we walked down the street to his house. in that waiver state for their employees and they can race down to the bottom and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of coverage for pre existing conditions. And it's not just that we have to do that. 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 Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road, and they're going to take another two hundred billion out of the Medicare program. That's a trillion dollars with a T over the next ten years out of Medicare and Medicaid. And it would be one thing if they came to you and said, "This is about balancing our budget, and we're all going to sacrifice." But that's not what they're doing. They are doing this to give six hundred and eighty billion dollars in tax cuts to the very rich. That is wrong. In this Republican monstrosity, yes. taking from the sick and vulnerable yes. and giving it to the richest yes. and most powerful. It is the largest wealth transfer that has ever been passed in Congress in modern times. It is dead wrong, and we need to tell everybody we know what's going on. Yes. We do that? Yes. I gotta tell you, you being here tonight, you being here tonight <laughs> is so important because the one thing that is gonna save us in the United States Senate is if the Republicans who voted for this thing. This, this dumpster fire. The Republicans who voted for this in the House of Representatives, if they get the message loud and clear that their people are upset about it, that's what you're doing here tonight. And those senators will pay attention to that. They will see that John Faso couldn't answer basic questions and had to go into hiding rather than do a town hall meeting in this district. And that'll slow them down. You can win this fight. Don't let anybody tell you we can't win. We can win this fight. Why? Did John Faso's party not <clears throat> have hearings, consult with the Democrats, consult with us, with the hospitals, with doctors? Thank you very much. CBO. With the CBO. Well, if he can't answer that, I want him to go back to a civics class. Yes! How do you make it better? You've got, I don't want my democracy taken away. This is not right. 
Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This health care bill that they passed, they introduced it at 8.30 at night. It's 112 pages, and they didn't read it. They don't even know what's in it. You know how I know? Because 7 million veterans are at risk of losing their care under this bill. And even they say, oh, we didn't mean to do that. We'll fix it later. I have employee-sponsored health insurance uh, and that I've been paying into for years and years. What can I expect out of this new bill? Yeah. Well, for one thing, your employer won't be required to, to give health insurance. They take that, that requirement. Employees, employers will no longer have to cover their employees. Um, you can expect that employers can weaken your coverage um, if they have a waiver state where they can find coverage policies that they can uh, use. And if we want to make these markets where there's too few insurers work better, we can do that. You know how you can do that? Public option would do that. I had a sign for you because I was holding the sign. I'm not as nice as she is. I had a sign that said, Judas Faso, betrayed by a kiss that crucified our health care. I asked him explicitly about what we had spoken on, right, Rachel and I just mentioned it a couple of times here, about that employer-sponsored insurance that could go to a state with less... Um, that's right. He said that was patently false. Yeah, no, it's... Wall Street Journal. He just reads the So, um, so he said it was patently false, so... Yeah, you should read the bill. That would be a good start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't agree with tell you. I mean, but I know what I could do. He could come in here and tell you himself. How about that? <laughs> what he doesn't understand, maybe, uh, is is that there is a rule that pre-exists this bill that says that any employer is not bound by the essential health benefits of their state, they can go to another state. You know why? Because we had a floor in that required essential health benefits and pre-existing conditions to be covered in every state. Right. So theoretically, if they wanted to go above that, because another state had a different set of requirements that were better than that, a corporation could do that. But think about that. That becomes a monstrosity in the world when you take that floor out. Now they can go to any other state, but those standards can be lower. He's wrong about that. He should read the Wall Street Journal. Okay. High-risk polls don't work. Thank you very much. They don't work. That's right. You know what high-risk polls are? High-risk polls are when you corral the very sickest people into one group. And they all have to get covered the same way. And it reminds me of when we used to take people with, with, with mental health issues and say, we're going to put them in that beautiful building up on the hill. We're going to call it a farm. And it's going to look great from a distance. But inside, it's going to be a house of horrors because we're not going to pay for it. Or we're going to have people trained right. Or we're not going to really care about those people. We're just going to get them out of sight, out of mind. That's your high risk tool. I got an idea. When we go back to Washington, I'm going to introduce an amendment that every member of Congress who votes for this thing should go in a high risk pool. anybody who works at HealthQuest or anybody who works on, the, on, on any one of these hospitals, they will tell you that the Affordable Care Act has stabilized them because more people have insurance and they have less uncompensated care and they get something called disproportionate share payments that are supposed to make up for that. And the Affordable Care Act has really helped our rural hospitals. By the way, it's been a boon for community <laughs> health care centers too, which is so you know, insurance companies need to cover it longer. It needs to be longer treatment up front. Medicaid is the way we're doing that right now in our health care. So just that one thing. But also, anybody who's carrying on the autism spectrum, I told you, Medicaid is a lifeline. Anybody who's caring for an elderly parent in a nursing home, uh, you guys know, you do such great work in nursing homes. These guys are the people who take care of our moms and our grandmas. Uh, we got any teachers here tonight? is $4 billion to the public schools every year for kids in schools who have medical disabilities, right? So if you think about how many disabled kids are in school, and they deal with a lot of stuff, right? And some of them have medical issues, some of them need care during the day, some of them have oxygen tubes or other things that require some care. $4 billion right now support because they're considered uh, qualified organizations to receive Medicaid reimbursement. 
So you go whack Medicaid, that means kids with disabilities in our schools aren't going to get the resources they need. So it goes on and on, right? And all I can tell you, <clears throat> mental health services, right? All, so everyone with a disability can include the, the people with addiction problems, mental health issues, behavioral health issues, um, you know, you have, you know, kids with disabilities. Um, it, is, it is not just for people who are less fortunate economically. But by the way, since when is it a good idea to give tax cuts to multimillionaires to screw uh, you know, poor people, right? <laughs> We need, to, we need to make sure that certainly in places like New York, but really everywhere, that, that we don't go back. We don't have to go back. We can fix what's wrong with healthcare and move forward together. And, uh, and, we, and, and what I really want to do, and I really mean this, I don't want to have any more people like Maggie come up to me and say, I'm scared to death, I'm going to sleep over this, I'm worried about it. You have enough to do. We want you to stay well and healthy and focus on, on the good things in life. I am sorry that your country is doing this to you. But don't give up, because a lot of us are going to fight there with you. <laughs>